Good morning and God bless you. Um, first off, I'd like to thank Pastor Mayo for giving me this opportunity to bring forth another devotion on a beautiful Friday morning. And to get started, I'd like to take a moment and pray. Thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to come into your presence, for another day to serve and worship you. I pray that you'll touch each and every one of our minds in this chaotic world. Give us peace, give us rest, and just bless our day. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, today I'd like to talk about um, the woman with an issue of blood. The last, I would say, couple of months, it seems like in the back of my mind, I'm constantly reminded of this woman. And I've tried to take the time to really chew on it. And I believe God has really showed me some significant things. And I pray that they'll bless you and help you. And I pray that somehow, some way, um, you'll be blessed. So with that, I'd like to start reading in Mark chapter 5, verse 24. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood 12 years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. And when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the plague. And Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that virtue had gone out, of him turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And he looked round about to see her, and had done this, excuse me, to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. A little bit lengthier reading today, but my main focus today was desperation. This woman was extremely desperate. She had been plagued, excuse me, I would like to make a mention that this story, or I say story, but this account was repeated three different times in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, or excuse me, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And I like Mark's rendition of it and his wording of it. But the significance of here was she was plagued with this for 12 long years. That's 12 years of waking up every morning hurting in pain, in agony, desperate. I'm sure she woke up realizing in that day and age she was ostracized. She was considered unclean. She was not allowed to be amongst everyone else. Everything she touched and handled was considered unclean. She was unworthy in every aspect of her life for 12 miserable years. She was also dead broke. The Bible says she gave and spent everything she could trying to be made whole, to be fixed, just to feel normal, just to be another normal average person. And yet, 12 years, she was unworthy and unclean and cast, cast away and cast out in her own society amongst everyone. How many of us today, before God saved our soul, we're just like that woman, spiritually, in our minds. Mental illness isn't talked about very much in today's society, but how many of us deal with depression, anxiety, um, just not being able to wake up every day and function in this life before Christ? And there's a whole lot of people in this world that are just like you and I. Without God, such were some of us. Remembering back when you first came into the house of God, do you remember how desperate you were for that altar call? 
at the end of the sermon. Some of us don't even remember what was preached when we received the Holy Ghost, but we sure remember who is around us praying. When we can feel other people's pain and agony and sorrow, that's a symbol of a true Christian because Jesus was that perfect example for each of us. He felt this woman's pain. He felt her agony. He felt her distraught spirit. Even with her just touching his clothing, not even his body. I think so many of us try to shoulder our own problems living for God, even after we've received the gift of the Holy Ghost and we've been baptized in Jesus' name. We start to lean onto our own understanding and we forget about that desperate cry that we first had coming to Christ. And I wonder, and I want to pose this challenge to myself and each and every one of us, how many of us and what would happen if this Sunday, if the next prayer meeting, if the next church service, we all came in with that same mindset? You know, the Bible says that they were all in one mind and one accord. What would happen in our churches, in our prayer meetings, if we all did that, if we came back to the house of God with that sheer determination. I don't care who's around me. I don't care what I look like. I don't care what people think. I just need to get to that altar. I am anxious to see what will happen if our prayer meetings start with that desperate love and hunger for the things of God. I truly believe that the prayer meetings will take control of our church services where they just flood over where we don't have a traditional song service and then the preaching comes forth and the altar call. What revival, what, what miracles will take place when that happens, when that sheer desperation comes forth? And they have to be mixed with faith. So I could take a moment. There's so many stories in the Bible. I, I've kind of pulled up a few um, about desperate people because the Bible's full of it. But the one that sticks out to me the most here is in Luke chapter 18, verse 6. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge saith. Excuse me, I want to go back here for a moment and go up a couple verses. I'm skipping ahead. And there was a widow in the city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversaries. And he would not for a while. But afterward, he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him? Though he bear long with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on earth. Hebrews 11, verse 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Let's get desperate for a move of God. Let's mix that with faith. That is the perfect formula for seeing miracle signs and wonders in this last day. I think each and every one of us at some point in time have dealt with just about every kind of situation you can imagine. I can name them all here today, finances, mental, emotional, um, relationships, jobs, whatever the case may be here today. God can fix it all. But he loves a desperate heart. He loves it when it's mixed with faith. Let's all see what God has for us this coming Sunday in our prayer meetings. Let's, let's try to get up a little extra early and maybe... Instead of a a 15, 20 minute prayer meeting, let's have a 30, 45 minute prayer meeting. I want to challenge myself. But if we all collectively 
Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. God will move, and I'm believing for that. And if I could just remind us one more time, I don't want to be a broken record, but I believe God put this really on my heart. He loves that desperate cry. Cry out unto him. God bless you. Thank you for your time. Have a blessed day.